Hey everyone, hopefully you're having a good day. My name's Andy, my channel is Finding Value. If you guys are looking for under undervalued investment opportunities, click subscribe. We talk about a whole bunch of different sectors. We talk about what's undervalued, what's overvalued. Uh, we talk about financial educational topics, ratios. How do you figure out if something's overvalued or undervalued? How do you figure out where we are in certain cycles? Talk about all that stuff on this channel. If that interests you, join the community. Join it. Let's let's talk about this stuff. So today I'm going to talk about st structural events or a structural underlying move versus an event. An event is COVID. A structural uh, move that's coming up is a real estate market that's going to boom. Uh, a structural event is a commodity a commodity boom that's coming. And an event can do a short-term movement within a structural move. It can pull something down for a short period of time. And I'm gonna show you why I think we have structural moves ahead of us in commodities. And I'm gonna show you what events do inside of those structural moves. So let's jump into this presentation. I'm gonna show you a bunch of things. So this is structural versus event. Uh, structural is the underlying fundamentals of a move. It is the supply, demand, uh, and the market conditions during that time. Events can happen inside of structural moves that can create opportunities, specifically buying opportunities, because they're going to throw the ratios and the valuations, they're going to skew it for a very short period of time to, to your favor. And if you know what you're looking at, if you know what to look at and how to perceive uh, the world around you and the value, you can take advantage of insane buying opportunities at valuations that no alive human being has ever seen. Uh, I invest for the structural move, the big move, uh, and events can create better buying opportunities, but they're going to be short-lived. They're gonna, they're gonna be less than a year or two uh, within a very large structural move. And again, this is only financial education. Uh, you guys are gonna have to do your own research and due diligence if you want to partake in some of the companies that I share uh, on this channel. So let's dive right in. So this is long-term interest rates uh, back to 1790. And what I have on this is, these are interest rates, these are rates. Think of it as, uh, a 10-year treasury yield bond. I think that's what this one is. Uh, we've got low, uh, on the, on the x-axis is time, on the y-axis is percent. And then I went in and I put in these boxes. These boxes are signaling a structural change in the markets. We went from a declining interest rate environment to an increasing interest rate environment. Then we went back into a decline, then into an increasing rate. and the way that you want to invest in these red boxes is going to be vastly different than the way that you want to be invested when you have declining interest rates. So we were in a 40 year from 1980 all the way to 2020 ish, a 40 year decline in interest rates. That 40 year decline is supportive of stocks and bonds. Those are those spots that you want to be, stocks and bonds during that time frame. What I am proposing is that real estate has changed. Real estate uh, is going into an expansion phase. Uh, we are going to see vastly higher uh, real estate prices, which is going to drive inflation. And inflation is going to drive higher interest rates. Higher interest rates is going to create a red box uh, eventually which means that we are going to have a, a move of higher interest rates for a certain period of time. How long that interest rate environment might be, it might only be you know, this long here, it may only be 10 years, maybe it's eight years. I don't know the exact length, but what I can tell you is I think the red box that I've got on here, higher interest rates, I think they're coming. And then higher interest rates is going to spur the rotation of money, uh, and if that money rotate, rotation is going to go from bonds and stocks. And when I, when I talk about stocks, I'm not talking about just every single stock. I'm talking about the indices like an S&P 500, the overall market index, 
Uh, there's going to be companies that are stocks, like mining companies, that are going to do very well uh, in a commodity boom. It's the consumers of commodities are, are the ones that are going to lag, and the commodity producers are the ones that are going to lead. They're going to be very good uh, investments. So I think that's coming. I think higher interest rates is coming very soon. And it already kind of bottomed. We, we came off a bottom and everybody's been talking about higher interest rates. I think that's going to continue. Now, here's 100 years of commodity valuations. You, see, you guys have seen this chart before. This is the commodity index versus the Dow Jones ratio. I've got that little mutated star, whatever you call that. Uh, it's down there and that's the valuation. It's never been this cheap uh, in history. So commodities are where we want to be based off of a valuation. So let's look at some commodities and I'm going to show you kind of where those red boxes fit and, and why I think a commodity boom is potentially coming. So we've got the red boxes, which are structural moves in interest rates going higher for those short periods of time. And they're also signaling that we've had uh, expansionary phases in real estate are the red boxes. So this is the platinum price. We've got the price on the, on the y-axis and the x-axis is time. You can see two patterns, clear pennant formation patterns that have uh, formed. We, we had one form from 1980-ish to uh, 2000. And then we have large impulse moves in between those big pennants. So we had one in the beginning of the pennant from 70 to 80. We had one from two, late 90s all the way to 2008. We created this pennant here, and we've created a pennant here. Now, in the red boxes, this is basically where we had expansionary phases in real estate. We have an expansionary phase in real estate coming. And what happened every time in an expansionary phase of real estate to the platinum price? The platinum price went up, and it created a, a environment where the market conditions were right for platinum to go up. It was an inflationary environment. So we went from $100 to a, 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 almost a thousand, a 10 bagger in platinum price in, a very, in, in about a 10 year time frame. We went from 300 something all the way to 2,200 in this environment. And we just created another one and we, we popped out to the upside, pretty strong move. And I, this could pull back a little bit do kind of like one of these or something like that because they usually pull up and then they pull back a little bit before they they move on but we're going into another red box we're going into another real estate expansion phase we're going into another inflationary environment and what do you think the platinum price is going to do by looking at this chart we've got two chart patterns one that broke to the upside here and we've got another one that just broke to the upside it's going to move higher i think i think this is going to continue to the upside and I think we could see a very large move. This could go maybe four or 5,000 or more. Maybe it goes to 10,000. I don't know the exact pricing move. Uh, it it's all dependent on how much inflation there is and the supply demand. It's, it's both of those things. Inflation being the larger component of it. And another thing I want to talk about here is COVID is this little blip here. COVID didn't ruin this structural move. COVID created an opportunity that brought the price down where you could buy the living heck out of it and then uh, profit from this little COVID sell-off. And then it came right back up. So COVID was just a small event-driven move in a very large structural move that I'm showing you guys. Here's SM Energy, it's an oil company. It's got a lot of debt. And I've got that red box down there. This is just a long-term chart. The red box, the upper part of the box is signaling a support line. Basically, this is a support line that SM was gonna stop, turn, and then move on higher. This was gonna move on up, but COVID happened, and we had this big old crash, the crash of COVID. So COVID came, it crashed down, and anything in this box is the event-driven problem. That was the opportunity that created an insane opportunity uh, for buying SM Energy and any other oil company. 
So it got sold way off. He did this little bounce. That's where I bought was right there, a whole bunch. And then we came back up and this is kind of almost as if the event never happened because we're above the box and we're above where this thing was bottoming before. So this was going to be the ultimate bottom, but COVID happened. So the ultimate bottom was there. Now it's pulling on up. And I think this is going to move far, far higher. You can draw a trend line down here that it broke. And we're kind of at this point where it broke to the upside. This is, this is going to move far higher. And why do I think it's going to move higher? Because of the conditions. I think increasing interest rates, more inflationary environment, more inflation uh, really drives energy prices higher. That's energy is the, the largest inflation hedge uh, of any commodity. So that's that's one event that happened in a structural move. The structural move, this thing couldn't go down anymore. I mean, it was unless it goes bankrupt. Uh, and I was a little worried about the bankruptcy uh, of them going bankrupt, but they pulled out of it and I got a I got a I don't know, maybe a 12 bagger right now out of the out of the stock and I'm just holding it right now. I think this thing's going to go far higher. So that's SM Energy. You zoom in. This was the crash of COVID, the 2020 crash. It blew out, came down, and created this buying opportunity. Now, if you know the difference between structural and event-driven uh, deals here, you would have known that the ratios were a screaming buy for oil against gold or anything else during that time frame. You would have known that the event uh, created a buying opportunity. You would have known that structurally the housing market's going into an expansionary phase with real estate going higher and inflation coming, which is which is going to support higher oil prices. So if you guys know this stuff uh, from this channel, you can identify opportunities and buy undervalued assets with confidence. With confidence. And that's what it takes. It takes confidence and knowing what you're doing to make a lot of money. And now we should be holding because the market conditions, the structural market conditions are supporting higher commodity prices. We know that commodities have never been priced this low. And that commodity price priced that low is still super cheap. This is this. I'm not I'm not calling this out. I'm not saying this is going there. But SM Energy could be a one hundred and eighty dollar stock. Easy easy. And, and, and that's with oil prices accounting for all this inflation. So I, I just want everyone to understand the event that could potentially happen are not going to mess up the structural moves. They're going to be short-term uh, events. So structurally, and when I talk about structure, this is like the fundamental backing of the supply demand of all of these things. So we have a commodity bull market and potentially higher interest rate environment coming our way. We have a bull market in real estate that's going to kick this all off, I think. And an event could disrupt the housing market and delay the move a little uh, like COVID did, but it won't stop the move. It will delay it. It won't stop it. It's not nothing to be afraid of. So we, we know structurally we have to build a bunch of homes. We created more families than we have homes available. That is the shortage. That is the supply demand disruption. Now, I've seen other, some other clips. They talk about demographics. The demographics they're talking about is behind this. It's 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 they're like teenagers now. So there will be a time where this does slow down, but that's 10, 15 years out. We have to get through a bunch of buyers in the millennials who are in home buying years, creating families, uh, and, and having kids. That's going to be inflationary. And all that that group the spending habits that they're going to have, inflationary. It, it's, it's all based off of where humans are and the majority. It's the, the population, how much population is going through certain periods of their life. And when you're going through a kid phase, it's an inflationary phase. They're going to spend more money. The velocity is going to kick up with that money a little bit. And we have a larger demographic coming through, going through that phase of home buying and buying furniture and buying kids stuff and spending on their kids. They're going through a very uh, large spending area of their life. And that's going to be inflationary. So structurally, we're going to see inflation and I think higher interest rates. It's just like the baby boomers that went through the 70s. The baby boomers, demographics, they went through the 70s. They kicked the velocity up. They got inflation. They got higher interest rates. 
And I think this is going to mirror that time frame based off of demographics, based off of the housing market. Everything's kind of aligning. If that's the case, we're going to have a commodity boom. And the charts are telling us that we're having a commodity boom coming. They're breaking big downtrends. They're breaking their 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 price chart patterns like platinum, like gold, silvers is is forming a very nice gigantic pattern. So the market agrees with my opinions here, uh, and we're seeing that in the charts, and we're seeing the opportunities that I'm presenting on this channel through my presentations. So what I want people to have, what what I have. My paradigm is structurally, this is coming and nothing's going to stop it until we hit an equilibrium in the market, an equilibrium between supply and demand. We have to equalize this stuff out at some point. We haven't equalized it out in the real estate market. It's going to be inflationary. We haven't balanced anything in commodities. The supply side of commodities is far lower than what the demand that's coming. So all this stuff has to balance out. And in order to balance all this out, we're going to see far higher prices. That's that's my take on it. Now, if we have the moratoria end, if something happens like that, it could delay the move. I don't think it will stop the move. It could delay it. And and we don't know how many homes are going to come on and, and, and when this is going to end. And we don't know, maybe, maybe it's going to be good if it ends, because now all those people get to kick out non rent paying people. I don't know the, the the total outcome here. It could be bad for some people and it could be good for others. I don't know how bad it could be and I don't know how, how, how we don't know how many homes could come onto the market. We don't know any of that information and we don't know when. We don't know if it's all going to happen at once. So uh, it's difficult to project this stuff, but structurally it's going higher. It's going higher, but an event driven ending could drop it down a little bit. It could be like a dip and then a, and, and then another surge higher. So what I see uh, is exactly what I showed you guys. Structurally, we're moving higher on commodities and real estate. Uh, and then stocks and bonds are going to be the ones that are going to suffer because they don't like higher commodity prices. It's going to it's going to compress their margins and higher interest rates are going to discount their net present value calculations lower so their PEs are going to shrink not expand which is is going to be a very big headwind for those types of companies like technology companies all right guys hopefully this helps you gives you more confidence gives you a little bit different paradigm of how you look at investments and gives you the confidence to buy into things that are undervalued and hold on the big move here five ten years plus is you buy this stuff you hold on and you just you ride through it uh, I think that's going to be the best uh, course of action, the best mindset to have, and cost average in if you have any events that draw, you know, draw these things down. Thanks for listening. This is Finding Value.